So this next episode of the MySQL series is going to talk about a very powerful feature in databases called stored procedures. Now I've already done stored functions before and if we look in our database we can see that the function section uh, we created previously a function called full name. Now that was great you could pass parameters in and we could get one value back. Stored procedures, however, let us run a whole bunch of queries. You can come sort of combine everything together and then all you have to do is call the name of the function. So it really improves the uh, performance. If you've got server side code that's trying to talk to the database instead of calling one query after another and every query is a brand new connection and call, you can just tell the database, hey, I want you to run this query. Here's some input data and run it all and let me know what you get back. So stored procedures. We're going to take a look at how to create those. Now, if you've been following along with the series, you've already got all the tables and everything. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to download this. The link to this is in the description. You can download this file, copy and paste it into a, a SQL window, or you can download the zip and then extract the SQL file and use the import tab to bring in the data and create all the tables. Okay, so we're going to be working with the characters and races tables. So characters has these three columns, character ID, character name, race ID. Um, these are foreign keys that point to the race ID over in the races table. And the values for this is 12 is men, three is hobbits, one is dwarves, and four is elves. So we're going to write a store procedure. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to pass in a name and a race ID it's going to put that into the appropriate table for us, the characters table, and then we're going to run a query inside the same store procedure and get the result back of the new version of all the character data where we're still matching that race ID. So if we added an elf, we'd get all the elves coming back. If we added a human, we'd get all the humans coming back. If we added a hobbit, we'd get all the hobbits coming back. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to jump over to the SQL. And actually, I'm going to go up to the movies level to do this simply because I get a bigger screen to work with. I'm going to open this up a little bit wider. Now, so this is sort of what we're going to start off with. I have here a line that's at the top and the bottom. And what this is doing is a delimiter is what is placed between each of these SQL commands. So I'm changing this because inside my store procedure, like I'm running this here inside of PHP, my admin, and inside this window, I'm going to be using semicolons behind each of the other lines. Now that's great for here because we're creating a procedure. This is going to be saved inside of a new category here. We've got functions, tables, and views. We're going to create another one where the store procedures are going to go. And this code that's inside of here, this collection of queries inside the procedure, that's going to be saved for us. So it's going to run at a later time. Right now, right at this moment, inside this window, this is going to be the delimiter that says, here's the end of the command that I'm asking you to run. So it's going to create a procedure. This is the SQL. Create procedure. Um, you don't have to put the name here because I'm inside the database movies. This is where it's going to create it. I did it just to be very clear about what it's where it's being placed. So we're creating a procedure. This is the input parameters. So I'm creating a variable that's being passed in. And there's three different words. By default, these are going to be in. When you're creating a function, they're always in. But for stored procedures, they can be in, out, or in, out written like this. So in, out, oops, out, and in, out. And the reason we have that is sometimes you want to pass data to the procedure. Sometimes you've got data that's going in, being changed, and coming out. And sometimes you just want to get some value out. So we're declaring here that we want to get something back. Now for this simple example, I'm just doing a couple of variables that are going to be in. So I'm passing them to when I call this procedure. I'm going to have one called name one called race. Name is going to be a varchar 30 and race is going to be an integer. So those are the data types of these two variables that I'm passing to the procedure. 
the whole procedure, all the code, the SQL that I want to run is wrapped between the beginning and the end. The stuff that's in between the beginning and end, that's what's going to, get, going to be saved inside the procedure to run later. That's where the semicolons are going to be used. So my delimiter, I'm saying from this point on inside this window, this is the new delimiter. So there's the end of my procedure. And then I'm putting it back to this. And I'm doing that because we can do this. We can call, and I should write it all in capitals. It will run uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter, but convention is that it's uppercase. I'm going to call the store procedure called char race, which is the name up here. Again, I can put movies in front of it just to clarify, but since I'm already in the database movies, this is going to work. Then I need to pass in two parameters. One's going to put the value inside of here, and the second will put it in here. So let's say that I'm going to input these values right here. I'm going to do this. So my query is going to put something inside of here, and then I'm going to get everything that matches that race. So this is how I would call it. And I use a semicolon here because I put the delimiter back to that. This delimiter could be anything you want. If you want to make it a couple dollar signs, you want to make it a dollar sign of the question mark, whatever you want to use. But that is the end of the procedure. Um, so I'm going to call it. I'm going to pass in this value and this one. And then inside of here, this is what a normal insert statement would look like. But I want to put these variables, name and race, into here. So just do that. Put the variables there, just like you would in other programming languages. This will take those two things as the variables, name and race. That will do the insert. And now the real power of stored procedures, the fact that you can do multiple things. Now I will select and we're going to get character ID, character name, and race name from characters inner join on races as are on C dot race ID equals R dot race ID where C dot race ID or it could be R dot race ID doesn't really matter for the filter equals our variable from up here race that's the one that we want to put here now I should Put these inside of here just to be consistent throughout. There we go. So I'm doing these two things inside of here. I'm going to do an insert into the characters table. I'm going to put in these two values. Then I'm going to do a select where I'm going to bring together the characters and races table and I'm going to write out the values of all the characters that are of the type race that I sent in. Okay. So I'm going to create the procedure and I'm going to call it all at once. There we go. So we created the procedure and then we called it. And there we go. Of course, I put the wrong number for the, uh, uh, the race. This should have been number three that I used. So I'm just going to quickly copy that, fix this. So we'll go into characters and we'll update that one. So that should be a three. There we go. So that's updated. Now back to our SQL. Okay, store procedure. Now, if I run the code again, just like I have here, what's going to happen is I'm going to get an error saying that, hey, the procedure has already been created. So we will add a line up here at the top to say drop procedure if exists movies.char race. 
All right, so we're going to drop it, recreate it. Now, you don't have to drop and recreate it every time you use it. I'm just doing that so that I can make changes to this as many times as I want and keeping all the SQL together on one screen for you for you to see. All right, so this was Frodo was number three. So I'll put another one in here, Samwise three. And you can see that you can call this again and again and again. That's the cool thing about store procedures. So let's put uh, Boromir in here. And the men are 12. And we'll put Thorin in there. And the dwarves are number one. There we go. So I'm going to insert and spit out these three values, or these three record sets. Three inserts, three record sets. We'll go. So it'll drop it, recreate the procedure, and then run it three times. So it dropped it, it ran it, called it one time. There's all the hobbits. Ran it again. There's the men. Ran it again. And there's the dwarves. So we now have this procedure that we can call again and again. Just like that. And if I refresh this panel over here, you will see that we now have a category. There's functions, procedures. That's the new one. There's our procedure, tables, and views. So this right here is the procedure. And in phpMyAdmin, if you want, you can alter it right here. It's just quick and easy. You can edit the content right here. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I will leave a link to the SQL file so you can recreate this database or create the database and all of its contents if you need to. Uh, I'll also provide a link to the syntax for creating procedures and functions. It's the same reference page. And there's another one for the call, which is what we're doing right here. There's a call reference. So I'll leave links to both of those, as well as the link to the entire MySQL playlist. And as always, thanks for watching.